Joining us now, anyhow, talk about the banks. Are they rapacious robber barons, um, bastard um, and rapacious individuals, or are they just doing their job freely? It's Sam Stubbs from Simplicity. Sam, good morning to you. Thank you for joining good me. Good morning, How are you? Michael. Yeah, good morning, It's been a while, eh? It has. Um, first of all, after you left university, where did you go? Oh, overseas, mate. I, went in, I was an investment wanker for uh, a goodly long while overseas, and then I came back, yeah. So yeah, you, you ended up in New Zealand Kibble. working for who? I ended up working well. Uh, ulti- I started out working for uh, Hanover for about seven months and then Tower for five years and then uh, decided to uh, you know, get into give back mode and have been doing the simplicity thing for about six years now. So what is simplicity? It's an investment company, yeah? Well, it, yeah, look, if, if you thought about it as a Southern Cross of Finance, you wouldn't go far wrong. So it's a charity and it runs uh, a, basically a non-profit investment firm. So we uh, we only charge what it costs, don't make any money, and uh, we're a KiwiSaver default provider. We do investment funds. We also do the lowest cost uh, mortgage in the country now. And then also uh, we build affordable housing. So we're doing a whole, whole bunch of stuff, about four and $4.3 billion worth of investments now. That's a lot of money to be in charge of, and you, you, yeah. you, you're you you motivated, you say, by altruistic ends. Is that right, Sam? Yeah, yeah, we do, yeah, because 15% of all the fees, so we charge the lowest fees, but the 15% of those fees go to the charity, so it's giving away about uh, almost $2 million a year now, and uh, as well as charging, you know, the lowest cost in all of our products. So, the whole idea is to create a, a really, really long-term business. You know, it doesn't make any money, which means it won't be worth anything, which means it's not, you know, can't be bought or sold. So it's going to be around for 100 years, just like Southern Cross, and just be entirely devoted to giving Kiwis the lowest cost financial products. Yeah. So when you talk about Southern Cross, you mean Southern Cross Health? Yeah, Southern yeah, Cross Healthcare, yeah. 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 So they're a, they're, a, they're a charity which runs a non-profit business. You know, they've been around for 75 years and yeah. are, are, doing, are doing good things. So we basically taken that model and said, why don't we have one of those in the, in the finance world? Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, um, you were very, um, have been quoted extensively by the mainstream media this week about um, banks making the profits that they are. What's the problem yeah. with that? Are they not commercial enterprises? Don't we have the freedom of choice to use them or not? Yeah, absolutely. So, look, they are commercial enterprises and they're run by very nice people. You know, they're coming in and doing their job. The problem is is that, in total, the banks are now making so much money, uh, which is primarily going offshore to Aussie-owned shareholders of the banks. And it's got to the point now where, well, in fact, it's not got to the point. It's been the case for a long time now that they're actually making more money out of your average Kiwi than they are out of your average Aussie. And that is turning out to be sort of almost an impost on the economy. People are just paying too much for their services. And... Um, and, and the reasons are complex, Michael, and long, but, you know, you have basically our market dominated by four Australian-owned banks. Uh, Kiwi Bank are, are a minnow and, and have been, you know, undercapitalised and under-resourced for the longest time, so they've never really been able to compete as the New Zealand champion. And the banks now are making, you know, on a post-tax profit, I'm uh, sorry, on a pre-tax profit, almost $9 billion a year now. So that makes them <clears throat> easily the... That is a lot of money, Sam. It's a hell of a lot. Well, it makes them, uh, it, they're certainly out of the top five most profitable companies. They're consistently in the top five, and sometimes they're one, two, three, and four. Now, there's no other wow. um, modern economy I know of where the four most profitable companies are banks. So we've got a very weird situation here in New Zealand. The problem is we've also had a government which really has not been prepared to do what everyone else has overseas which is enforce open banking. So, you know, right now, uh, while people say it's easy to switch banks and simple to switch banks, the bottom line is it's actually more complex than you think because there's a whole lot of banking relationships you have and there's a whole lot of sort of um, inherited prejudices that once you're with a bank, it, it, it's hard to move. But uh, in, in other countries now, they bought an open banking, which means you can basically switch your accounts the same way you switch your mobile phone or power companies. And that's brought in a lot of competition and with a lot of competition, you start getting margins coming down to more reasonable levels. So I'm very interested in us having healthy banks, you know, healthy and profitable banks. But there is such a thing as too much profit. And even even the Prime Minister has admitted that this week now, that it's just getting getting to be a bit of a joke, particularly as the banks are effectively underwritten by the government. There's no way any government is going to allow any bank to fall over in New Zealand. So they've got this sort of implicit government underwrite. 
and yet they continue to use opportunities like COVID where they were delivered a whole lot of free money to lend to stimulate the economy to just basically jack up their margins, which they've done in the last 12 months. You know, they've chosen to make more money. Um, and, and it's not, you know, accidental or coincidental that they've made more money. They've actually chosen to expand their margins and make, and make more money. Now, you can understand why they would do that because that's their job, right, to make more profit. But that doesn't make it right. And uh, there's a role for the government here. And is, they is, should do whatever government Sam, have is, done. is there a... So, OK, so we, you're saying that our government hasn't been proactive enough in this area compared to other governments? Other, I mean, I was thinking of the Australian yeah. government, but they had an inquiry. Um, there was massive outcry over there about five years ago, or it might have been longer than that. So. Yeah, 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 there was <clears throat> about the Aussies, and we were calling for an inquiry then. They chose not to do that. They had a, the, the FMA and, and Reserve Bank had what I call a very soft soft inquiry. Um, but most importantly, Michael, uh, look, I've been having meetings with the government about open banking now for over three years now, and they've been well aware that other companies have bought this in. And, and you know, I mean, just just have a look at Aussie. They're the closest market to us now. Australians have open banking. The same Aussie banks operating in New Zealand now open operate in an open bank environment in Australia. There are now 82 banks to choose from in Australia, mm. right? It just gives you a whole lot more choice. Now, they're all regulated. They're all safe and all that sort of thing, just a lot more choice. So the government actually has had, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit disappointed at... Um, uh, the government's comments that, you know, oh, we're just going to start doing this, isn't it a great idea? It'll take a couple of years. No, 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 no. You've known about this for many years now. Uh, you've had an opportunity to enact this. You chose not to. And now when the, the profits uh, have become embarrassingly high, even for you, now you decide to you know, come in here like the white knight. Now, I think it's great that they're doing it, but they are slow to the party on this one. This is the rest of the world has left us behind on open banking and there's some significant catch up to play. But it is not going to take years, Michael. It's about taking it two years, that's complete rubbish. You can enact um, mm, open banking in this country if you wanted to in six months. So just um, um, Stacey asked uh, one of the callers here, sorry, I've just got people texting in this, on this interview, uh, Sam, and she yeah. said, what, what does the sharing of your data actually look like? What does that mean? Yeah, so what that means is you can actually, um, so let, let, let's say, for example, you wanted to get a, a, a cheaper mortgage. Your mortgage is coming up for renewal. Typically, what you've got to do is go to a mortgage broker or you've got to you know, look in the uh, online or whatever and sort of shop around. This would allow you to go to anyone and say, hey, listen, here's my banking history. Here's my mortgage history. You can see it temporarily. You can't keep that information, but I'm going to let you see it so that you can price a mortgage for me, right? So, I mean, here's one of the crazy things about, Mortgages. I will just give you the, an example, Michael. You and I, if you and I both took out a mortgage, right, the bank would charge us pretty much the same. But you might be much lower risk than I am. You should pay a lower mortgage rate than me because you're actually going to repay it more reliably than I am. But right now, because it's so difficult to share that information around, you can't get what I would call dynamic pricing of mortgages, right? Mm -hmm. And so the banks are making a fortune by charging everybody the same whether they're high risk or low risk. In fact, they're assuming that everyone's pretty much high risk and charging them more money for it, right? There's very little variation in mortgage pricing. If you had open banking and you could go to someone and say, hey, listen, here's my repayment record, have a look at it. They'll say, oh, yeah, you're low risk, we'll charge you less. That's an example of what competition would do, but you have to be able to have your data and to be able to show your data your history of banking to somebody else. The other thing is too, is you might just decide to change change uh, you know, um, suppliers with a click of a button just like you can with power companies right now, right? So you can go and have a look at all the rates and say, no, I'm going to move my banks to that. And you can do it very quickly online with one click. Those are the sort of things you'll be able to do. Your, your banking relationship shouldn't be any different than that you have with your power company or your phone company. So if I'm prepared back the advice that you've given me now, and that would be that the reason that they've made $9 billion these four Australian banks of profit over the past 12 months is in good part because there is insufficient competition, but also because the New Zealand government is allowing them the trading conditions to do so. Is that right? If I got that summarised right? Yeah, it's bang on. In fact, and, 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 and the, the only people who can create a level playing field for competition are the government. And, and there's this thing called the incumbency effect. You know, if, if, if businesses have been around and it's been difficult to switch business, they just get kind of entrenched. And that's what's happened with banking here. 
And I mean, to, to give you an example, the Aussie banks have actually stopped providing this information because I think it's embarrassing. But the last time I looked at it, um, the big four banks here in, Aust- in New Zealand were, and all Australian owned, were making about 20% more from a New Zealand customer than from their average Aussie customer. Yeah. Right? So on a like-for-like basis, they were milking us. Now, um, that, that, that is because our customers aren't either informed about what's available or they don't have enough choice and they're not able to switch easily. So only the government can make that happen. By the way, Michael, the banks could have chosen to do this a long time ago. There's nothing There's nothing miraculous about open banking. It's mm. very simple technology. Mm. Um, obviously, turkeys don't vote for Christmas, right? So um, my estimate is that every day that we delay open bank, banking costs New Zealand consumers about $1 to $2 million a day in excess you know, fees and charges and... And so on. So, so they're obviously not going to do it themselves. So only the government can do it. But I'm a little bit disappointed in the government. They've known about this for years, and they could have done this a long time ago. But they chose to, for whatever reason, deprioritize it or wrap it up in this huge project they've got called consumer data rights, which is a really big, really big and complex issue. Um, but I think in 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 trying to achieve nirvana in terms of the transferability of your data amongst you know all sorts of vendors, um, they've actually delayed doing what they should have done very early on, which is just get open banking in place and start saving people some money. So I think they've gone you know they 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 are overly ambitious uh, with this announcement. They should just say, look, we're bringing in open banking quickly and basically get get people in a position where they can choose from more suppliers, which is something they can't do right now. Uh, Sam, thank you very much for explaining that um, in the erudite way that you have. It's made things much easier for me. In fact, I've learned an awful lot in this just last 10 minutes. Um, what's what? <laughs> uh, my understanding, though, is that if there's a change of government, which is, you know, there's a good chance of that at the moment, in 12 months' time, yeah. I think they're promising an inquiry into banking. Is if I heard that right from Nicholas Willis? Yeah. Well, what they were pro- what they wanted is an inquiry into why the Reserve Bank lent so much money. Look, I'm a little, to be honest with you, my, my, uh, Michael. Like, I, I actually think we're generally blessed with our politicians in this country, but I'm a little bit disappointed in National too, in the sense that they should welcome open banking with open arms. So th- 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 this, yeah. is, this is the party of free enterprise and competition, right? They seem to be um, politicising the whole issue uh, by. A Effectively, you know, trying to get people to focus on the Reserve Bank, and they clearly don't like the Reserve Bank governor. That's that's as, as plain as day. But the real issue here should be, you know, competition. They should have a view on open banking, and they should be supporting it. Um, I, I wonder myself whether it's a little too political. I mean, you know, the ex ex prime minister is, you know, sits as the chair of one of the big banks. So I don't know how much how much of a factor that that plays in the, in this. But it's I think that you know national national and act should be welcoming open banking with open arms. This this this, this is entirely. F- um, th- their philosophy about open and free markets where the consumer has the choice, right? When I was um, writing policy for the opposition, Sam, a long time ago, yeah. we would be talking yeah, yeah. to people like you um, and I wonder, have the convers- has there been any conversation between you and the finance team um, of the National Party at Parliament? Uh, yes, yes, there is. Yeah, there is. And, and look, I think that, um, I think all... All, all, all of the major political parties are curious about, and that they, they all want things to be better, right? And so, and so, I think that what this government done has done in delaying open banking is not an act of commission, as it were. They, they haven't, you know, decided to support the big banks. It's just sort of an act of omission. They've just had other more important priorities, but. Um, I, I'm not going to let them off for that because no, open yeah. banking has had so you know open banking just had such a dramatic impact. Mm. If you if you've been to the UK recently, Michael, and you've heard of companies like Mondo or Revolut, they are absolutely transforming banking. Like the consumer experience is just miles better. Fees are coming down, all that sort of. It's just so much easier to use. We could have had that here. Instead, what we've had is. Banks making billions. And by the way, Michael, closing down branches, right? They've, yeah, as they've absolutely. made more and more money, yep. they've closed down branches and 300,000 New Zealanders yep. don't have access to mobile banking services. Yep. So they've been cutting off these clients. So yep. I think that, that, you know, that uh, there's almost like a social license to operate. I mean, I know that's a very trendy phrase right now, but when you're making billions of dollars like that, you've got to be doing the right thing, eh? Mm. And, 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 and I look at companies like ANZ, they... 
donates uh, uh, almost, less than 0.4 of 1% of their pre-tax profits to charity as well. And I say, well, how is it that companies like, you know, like Z and the warehouse can give three times as much as part of their profits? You're our biggest company. You should be leading in this, in, in this example. So there's just a whole lot of areas where I think they could have done the right thing, but they've actually chosen to just squeeze the lemon a little bit more, just get those profits up a little bit more. I understand that, you know, the head of head of the, the head of these big banks in New Zealand are basically glorified branch managers. You know, they're being told what to do by Australia. I know they're legally independent businesses, but they are they are here to make as much money from New Zealanders as possible and ship as much of it as possible over to Australia. That's how they're structured commercially. So. We just have to accept that, but equally also we don't have to take it and the government has the opportunity to create a level playing field here. It should create a level playing field. It's called open banking. Everyone else in the world, in the developed world anyway, is doing it or has done it. And we're, we're really, really late to the party here. So I'm very pleased that they finally acknowledge that it's necessary, but waiting another two years seems ridiculous to me. Sam, thank you so much for joining me. Really enjoyed your calls. Thanks, um, and thanks for educating the whole lot of us on that issue.